Hello guys and welcome to another MyDMX 2.0 tutorial. In the last video we took a look at how you can set up and patch all of your different lighting fixtures and now we're ready to start controlling our lights. So to do that we need to go over into the editor tab here. So inside the editor tab you can start controlling your lights and recording your different looks and these are called scenes. Now the way MyDMX 2.0 works is it assigns each attribute of your lighting fixtures onto a virtual fader. At the bottom of the screen down here, you can see we have our channel section with a whole load of faders. And each one of these faders corresponds to a particular attribute on one of our lighting fixtures. So when you first go into the editor tab, you'll end up with something like this. Nothing's recorded, everything is currently blank. So as I said, all of the attributes of our lighting fixtures are applied onto the virtual faders at the bottom of the screen. So this first fixture here in green is one of my inner spot pros. And what I can do here is I can find the shutter channel open the shutter and then grab the dimmer. And there we go, we've now switched on one of the inner spot pros. We can go over here to the tilt channel, tilt that down a bit and position it where we like. So pan, color, gobo, prisms, tilt, show modes, all of these different attributes can be controlled through the virtual faders. And you can see here at the bottom, we've got the scroll bar and we can scroll all the way across through all of the lighting fixtures in the rig. So let's take a closer look at these virtual faders. So let's say I want to change the color of the inner spot pro behind me. Well, what I can do here is grab the color fader and slowly move it up and we're moving through all of the colors, which is fine. You can easily control your light that way. However, there's a better way to do it. If you go up here and click on the color box, you'll see it expands and shows you all the available colors for your particular fixture. And then you can simply just click on the color rather than scrolling through the fader to find the color you want. Let's say we want this in yellow. And this works for all the other attributes as well. So we can go to the prism and we've got prism off and prism on. We can go to our gobo here and choose from all the gobos in the fixture. So it's a much quicker way of being able to access the features of your lights. So I've actually got two inner spot pros in my lighting rig behind me. There's the other one. So what if I want to control both of them at the same time? Well, you can easily do that by holding the command key on Mac and the control key on Windows to select multiple attributes at once. Let's say I want to grab the color for both these fixtures. Let's go and press on the color fader for the first fixture. In my case, I'm on a Mac here, so I'm gonna hold down Command, go over to the other color channel, and now I've grabbed both the faders at the same time, and I can scroll through and change the color of both fixtures at once. And by continuing to hold down that Command key, I can also change the color through these buttons here. So that's how you can easily grab multiple lights at once. And you can also use the shift key to select a range of faders. Let's move on to some of my LED lights, which are further down here. So here, I've got one of my mega bars and it's split up into loads of different segments. And let's say I just want to put the whole thing on in white. Well, to do that normally, I'd have to go one by one through each fader for each different segment, slowly turning it on until there, we've got the whole bar in white. So there's a really easy way you can grab multiple parameters at once. Let's go to the other mega bar I've got in the rig, let's put the dimmer up, and now I want to go and grab all of the color parameters for all of the segments. So what I need to do first of all is click on the first fader I want to control, hold down shift, go to the last fader, and now I'm controlling all of those attributes at once so I can easily bring the entire fixture into full white. So that's how the virtual faders work in my DMX. You can easily go ahead in detail and grab all the different attributes of your lights and put them exactly where you want them. Now, if you do have lots of different fixtures in your lighting rig like I do here, it can be a little bit time consuming to go and individually control the faders for all of your lights. So there is another feature in the software called the Scene Builder, which is a much faster and simpler way of building different looks. And I'll come onto that in a future video. So that's a quick look at the virtual faders and how you can start getting some basic control over your lights. Now, what if you set up a particular look that you like and you want to record it to be able to recall later? Well, that's where scenes come in. Scenes are all the various recorded looks you create, which you can easily recall during a gig. Now in the top left here of the software, you can see we have our scenes window, which is basically a list of all the different scenes we've created. Currently, we've just started our show, so we only have one scene, which is the default one you open up with, which currently is completely blank. Now, one thing you need to remember about my DMX, there is no record button. You don't set up your lights how you want them and then record them into a scene. In fact, it's the other way around. 
Once you're inside a scene, you can see here this scene is blue, which means it's active, we're editing it. Anything we do on the faders here is immediately recorded and saved into that scene. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and start creating a simple scene. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my Innerspot Pros, turn on the dimmer and the shutter for both fixtures. Again, using the command key here, I'm gonna grab the tilt for both lights. Tilt them down a bit. Let's pan them all the way around and cross them. So all the things I've just done are now recorded into this scene here. I can go ahead and create a new scene. And when I go back to it, it'll immediately recall that information. So there's no save button, there's no record button. The scene that you're actively in, anything you do is immediately saved. So let's add some more to this scene now. We're gonna go and grab some of my LED fixtures. If we scroll further down here, we can find my mega bars. So let's turn on the mega bars and let's say we want red. Grab all my red channels and fade them up. So we've added another thing to the scene and again, it's automatically saved right in. So that's really all there is to building scenes. It's as simple as that. In the scene window here, we've got several options. We can go ahead and name the scene here. So let's call this um, opening look. We've also got some more options here, which I'll come on to in a future video. Up in the top section here, we've got some controls which allow you to add more scenes, delete scenes you've created. You've also got the option to duplicate your current scene. Press that, you get a copy of it, so you can go ahead and change it. Let's say I want to add in the green channel to make the bars yellow. So we've now just really quickly created two similar scenes, one with the bars in red and one with the bars in yellow. So the duplicate tool is very powerful. And then you can use the arrows here to reorder the scenes in the list. Now, one important thing to say about the way scenes work in my DMX is you can only play back one scene at a time. That's an important thing to keep in mind when you're programming your lights, that when you're live at a gig, you can only select one scene to play back at a time. Now, some of you out there may be thinking, well, surely that's quite limiting in the way you can control your lights. Now, I don't see it that way. This software is designed to be simple and being able to play back only one scene at a time really simplifies controlling your lights. When you start working with bigger lighting desks where you're playing back multiple stacks of cues at a time, it can get very complicated with what has priority over controlling what light. So having only one scene playing back at a time just keeps things simple, which is exactly what you want as a mobile DJ. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. In the next tutorial video, we'll be looking at the scene builder, which is a really cool feature on the software and a great way to control your lights. So make sure you check out the playlist link in the description below to go watch the other tutorial videos. And until next time, thanks for watching.